To understand the trigonometric functions of real numbers, first we will review the formula for the length of a circular arc. If we have a circle of radius r and a central angle theta that is expressed in radians, then we can find the lengths of the arc intercepted by this angle using the following formula. S equals r multiplied by theta. So again, if we know the radius of a circle and the angle theta expressed in radians, then we can find the length of this arc S by multiplying the radius by the angle. For example, let the radius of this circle be 5 inches and the measure of angle theta is pi over 3 radians. Then to find the length of the arc intercepted by this angle, we multiply 5 by pi over 3. Then if we use a calculator and we round this answer, we will get that the length of this arc is approximately 5.24 inches. But now let's consider a circle that has the radius 1. So here we have the circle that has the radius 1 and we call this circle a unit circle. In this circle we will have this central angle that measures t radians. And here we also have the arc that is intercepted by this angle. And now to find the length of this arc we will use the formula from above S equals R multiplied by theta. In this formula we will replace R with 1 and theta with t. Then we will get that s equals t. So what we found here is that when we have a circle that has radius 1, then the length of the intercepted arc is exactly the same as the radian measure of the central angle. So s is exactly the same as t, and this means that we can replace this s with t. And as an example, if this angle measures 2 pi over 3 radians, then the length of this arc is 2 pi over 3 units. In both cases, we say that t is a real number. Now, let's take a look at this unit circle. Here we have an angle that measures t radians and a point with the coordinates x and y that is located on the terminal side of this angle. Now, if here we have the origin of the rectangular coordinate system, then this point has the coordinates 1, 0. Then, if we start at this point and we travel along the circle to point x, y, then we travel a distance of t units. And just like with degrees, if we move into a counterclockwise direction, then t will be positive, but if we move into a clockwise direction, then t will be negative. Now, to better understand how this angle is the same as the length of the arc, let's see the following example. So here we have a unit circle and an angle of pi over 2 radians. Recall that pi over 2 radians is the same as 90 degrees, so this is the initial side of the angle and this is the terminal side. Now let's find the circumference of this circle using the formula C equals 2 pi r. And because the radius of this circle is 1, then 2 pi times 1 will be 2 pi. So the circumference of this circle is 2 pi. Now the arc that is intercepted by this angle of pi over 2 radians is 1 fourth of the circumference. So to find the length of this arc, we can take the circumference and divide it by 4. And if we reduce this fraction, we will get pi over 2. So we just found that the length of this arc is pi over 2, and this is the same as the given angle. And let's emphasize one more time that pi over 2 represents a real number. Now let's get back to the figure we have on the left. Again here we have a point with the coordinates x and y and we will use these coordinates to define the six trigonometric functions. The y-coordinate of this point represents the sine function 
of the real number t and the x-coordinate represents the cosine function of the real number t. So we will write that sine of the real number t equals y and cosine of the real number t equals x. The tangent function of the real number t is defined as y divided by x. Then we have three more functions that are reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent, and the first one is cosecant of t equals 1 over y, secant of t equals 1 over x, and cotangent of t equals x over y. So here we have all six trigonometric functions of the real number t. Now let's see an example on how to find all six trigonometric functions using the coordinates of a point on the unit circle. So here we have a point with the coordinates square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Then sine of t equals y, and in this case y is 1 half. Cosine of t by definition is equal to x, and in this case x is square root of 3 over 2. Tangent of t is equal to y over x, and y is 1 half and x is square root of 3 over 2. Now, to simplify this complex fraction, one way is to rewrite it as 1 over 2 divided by square root of 3 over 2, and then convert this division into multiplication by flipping the second fraction. So the second fraction will be 2 over square root of 3. Then, if we cross 2 and 2, we will get 1 over square root of 3, and now we will rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by square root of 3. Then tangent of t will be square root of 3 over 3. Now let's continue with the cosecant. Cosecant of t is 1 over y, and if we know that sine is 1 over 2, then we will just flip this fraction and we will get cosecant. So cosecant will be 2 over 1, which is just 2. Next we will have secant of t, which is 1 over x. And if we flip the fraction we have to the left, we will have 2 over square root of 3. Here again we have to rationalize the denominator, so we will multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 3. Then secant of t will be 2 square root of 3 over 3. And now the last function is cotangent of t. Cotangent is x over y, and to make it simple, we can take this fraction 1 over square root of 3 and just flip it. Then we will have square root of 3 over 1, which is just square root of 3. And now we have the values of all six trigonometric functions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.